We have three judges here, right? I'm a judge. Oh, wait, we're good. Okay. We're going to have three to start, so. the best new song. It's about thirsty children in Africa. Are you guys ready for it? Okay. Go. Okay. 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 Children in Africa are so thirsty because there's no more water for them. Oh my god, I'm going this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Doesn't that make you feel guilty, Rachel? You take 30 minute showers every day. Why, you, why are you picking on me? Well, did you know that a five minute shower uses more water than a typical person in a developing country uses each day? You know, I'm not the only one, but I guess I could take shorter showers. What about Chandler's bubble bath? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I told you not to tell anyone about those. Dude, you take baths? Well, I have a boat, so it makes it more manly. Besides, it keeps my skin smooth. Baby smooth? <laughs> Well, I did save a kidney from being run over. I believe it's the reincarnated spirit of my mother, Lily. Well, I cleaned the apartment all by myself in under two hours. I went to three auditions. That's great. Did you get any roles? Uh, no. <laughs> Whatever. I'll get it next time. I found the cutest pair of shoes for only two hundred and forty dollars. And I found the I saw the cutest checkout boy, and I went forward to two hundred. <laughs> wow. Well, I was in Africa doing legitimate charitable work and groundbreaking research. Do you guys even know what's going on in Africa? I've never been to Africa, but I've always wanted to go to that country. Dude, that's not even a country. Africa is a continent, about 11.7 million miles, actually, and it's made up of 47 different countries and territories. Well, no. <laughs> I just know things. Well, now, you guys might be able to take 30-minute showers and do lots of laundry every week. But did you know that lots of people in Africa have to walk miles just to get enough water to cook their food? Many countries in Africa don't even have enough water for the people to maintain their basic needs, such as cooking and doing laundry. They're running out of water because of unsustainable agricultural practices. And the privatization of water, desertification, and overall lack of knowledge about water scarcity issues also contribute to this. These issues are forcing people to migrate because they do not have what they need to survive. Not only that, but the distribution of water is very corrupt. The wealthy are favored and have less expensive water sources than most in developing countries. Not only that, but corporations have become the main sources of water distribution in many African countries. Corporations such as Nestle and Coca-Cola are the main sources of water for many places in Africa because the other water is so contaminated and polluted. Dude, what? What does that have to do with us? Well, because these countries don't have the water resources to support their people, they will be forced to migrate to new locations. Many of them are migrating to some countries in Europe, but in the future, they will probably immigrate to the United States, even New York City. If they are not moving here, it will, or if they are moving here, it will affect the amount of water you can use, and it will affect the economy here as well. No more 30 minute showers. By then, I'll be a famous actor, but I'll learn to share my water. If Chandler just stops taking bubble baths, then we'll all be <laughs> Guys, guys, the problem is a lot more complicated than that. Water scarcity not only forces people to move around, it causes many other issues. It leads to food shortages because people are unable to grow enough crops to feed themselves. It also causes conflict among the groups affected by the water scarcity. Oh, like when we went to Egypt with their parents that one time? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. They always liked you better. They left me in the city for eight hours, all by myself. At least I got to talk to some of the local people about their water scarcity issues. They told us that Egypt uses most of the water from the Nile River and all of the surrounding countries are in conflict, mainly them and Ethiopia. There are actually 10 different countries that all use the Nile River Basin, but Egypt and Sudan own all of the water. And there's a lot of tension with the countries upstream from Egypt, especially Ethiopia, because they're building dams. And this affects the water flow that goes into Egypt. Egypt has actually declared that they're going to go over war, over water. Oh, you know, I heard something about that when I was in Yemen. People are really worried about the conflict with the Nile because Northeast Africa is so close to the Middle East. If Egypt actually goes to war over water, it will spread political and economic instability all over the entire region. 
This instability could potentially cause a massive migration, which would make this instability in the region even worse. That would be a really big problem if that were to happen. Luckily, they have a group called the Nile Basin Initiative, which is made up of all of the countries that get their water from the Nile. It's a good start, but there's still a lot of tension in the Horn of Africa. Oh, oh my god, I just realized. So, the other day, I met someone from Africa. So, you know, I was just walking around downtown, you know, and then, then I looked in a random bookshop window, and oh my god, there was this book that had a picture of a woman who looked exactly like my mother. So, you know, I go, I go to get in the store, I'm walking in, and all of a sudden I bump into this man. It's, it's this African uh, nomadic tribesman from Tanzania. He was there representing his people, the Maasai, I believe, at a meeting at the UN. So, anyways, after a couple of cups of coffee, we went our separate ways. Phoebe, how does that relate <laughs> at all? Oh. What? Oh, sorry, sorry, he was there um, because many of the wildlife conservationists want them off the land and not covering so much area. See, he was saying that over the past two decades, there's been a huge water shortage that has completely, completely altered their way of life. Because there is less water, less grass is growing, and it's hard to feed the cattle, so their whole way of life is being altered. Oh, oh, I just saw a documentary on National Geographic about this. So these people have been living off the land as nomadic herders and are completely self-sufficient using Earth's cattle for milk and blood while herding them around the area to graze. They have a community ownership system. Instead of everyone owning their own livestock, the community shares. It's a really great system. The cattle are their livelihood. That is way different from us. I can just go to my fridge and get a sandwich. They have to kill an entire cow. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? He was saying that they've been having a lot of problems with this. Because of this water shortage, many people are forced to leave their homes in search of water and pastures. The pressure to migrate to these new places is making life really hard for them and ruining their traditional culture. Yeah, I whole heard that their whole way of life is threatened as a result. With water scarcity thought to be attributed to high population and climate change, there's been a big push against the Maasai way of life. People want them to move and make way for more development, but many of these indigenous people have been forced to abandon their way of life and migrate to big cities just to support their job, their families, and get jobs. Soon, they might become environmental refugees. That's so sad. Isn't it a good thing that they're moving? Not really. Their forced migration is really hard on their traditional way of life. And it, because of that, their traditional way of life is being threatened. And they're not the only people that have problems like this either. They have, there have been other water scarcity issues that, that have been doing the same thing to people in areas around Africa. Oh. Oh, I know how we can solve this problem. So, you know what they say. If you give a man a fish, you feed him forever. So let's just give you a fish. But, um, but, um, I think the saying goes, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Yeah. I don't think that fish point is going to work anyway. But I could just stop showering and only drink water. That way there would be more water around the world. No! No! no not happening! No. no. That is, <laughs> no. That's not going to solve the world's problems. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a problem for all of us. Why don't you just try reducing your water consumption? I mean, all of us can. It's a really great thing to do. But what they really need is something immediate and long-term to sustain their water resources. I got it. OK, we can build a big pool over in Africa, and then we can just fly them the water. OK, <laughs> yeah, my God. And then we'll just, we'll just go to Jupiter and get some more water when we run out. Good, good plan. Well, I thought it was a good idea. I got it. So I have some ideas for the Maasai tribe. What they can do is collect the rainwater near their houses. They could build tanks. We have this one time Chandler and I idea. Good times. We built this bathtub on the top of our rooftops and we used sheets of tin to collect the rainwater to fill the tub. We decided to do something like that. Um, yeah? Wow. Yeah. I just, I, I, that's actually a pretty good idea. Wow. Yeah. Using the roof. Well, yeah. that could work short term. That could be a really good solution. But we can't just look at it from that aspect. We need a better plan that involves all of the people. Oh, oh, and what about those de dis desalination. desalination plans that we, we were in Curacao and uh, we went scuba diving and tanning? We could just use the ocean for the Nile Basin. If well, they begin to implement cool. programs to recycle their water, they can cut back on their water consumption and ease the burden of water scarcity. So, in order to solve this problem, this is what needs to happen. Government officials in the Nile Basin should work with the local people to support equal water distribution. This way, people won't be forced to migrate. 
It's also important for people to have more efficient and sustainable agricultural practices. One example is recycling water by cleaning and using water. Waste water. Oh, hey, baby, isn't that weird? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that's right. yeah, yeah, come here, yeah, go, go, go. Come. So to solve this problem, we need to use, uh, dig big holes and use our roofs to collect rainwater. Mm. <laughs> study intensively population and migration and for a lot of our topics were related to water and indigenous people and we're, we were all really interested in that topic so we tried to incorporate everything around that general idea. There was also a student, a friend of ours, who went to Tanzania and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and um, got an interview with the Maasai people and learned a lot about them so we thought we'd want to integrate that into Well, they're basically just migrating to different areas in Kenya and Tanzania, and they're having a lot of problems with agriculture and with their their tribal rights. They're losing the rights to their land, so they don't have ways to sustain themselves. So some, some of them are forced to assimilate into more westernized type cultures, and that kind of starts to push away their traditional life. They're still friends with Banaki Air for a while, though, you guys are all. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was your choice. <laughs> we're friends. There were six of you. We're friends. Well, I. She's a friend. She's obsessed. And they all like it too. So yeah, we, we all, really all like watch it. it. Yeah. I watched it when I was little, even. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's acceptable. We just thought it'd be a creative approach. More fun to watch than a PowerPoint, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the rain, the rain barrel approach is that. Is that something that's been tried? Yes, the, um, they use the tin roofs and they it's mostly using, um, it's a way for women to take their own initiative in, and I believe there have been at least 200 um, cement uh, basins that have been created for them to collect rainwater off their tin roofs into these mm -hmm. places for drinking water. So is that in the cities primarily? That's for the Maasai. Oh, that's the Maasai there. Mm -hmm. So let's say Which rely off the grass, which relies off the water, which relies on the water. But they use, um, I know they, for the most part, drink blood and milk of the cattle for sustaining themselves. So it's more an issue of the, the agriculture needing water. Mm -hmm. right. Or for pastures. Yeah, for growing grass. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only way they can participate in. The economy in Tanzania and support themselves as a tribe is to rely on these cattle. That's the only option they have because they don't they don't have any official job training. They're not in, in really integrated into society. So this is really their only way of sustaining themselves. And when water when there's a big drought or huge water shortage, their cattle can't feed properly and they get skinny and it's just it becomes very unprofitable. Does it make you want to go to Africa? How long have you guys been working on this? Maybe at the most. <laughs> We met to work on the formal presentation, like we had like three or four 
meetings. Yeah, yeah. 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 they were pretty long. They were pretty long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all pretty busy, so it was kind of hard to get everyone together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting. Um, planning around, it's planning around all the jobs. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really it's really it's for you. Yeah. <laughs> where Where is the school? It's it's like Valley. Valley. Oh, that's right. The zoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it sounds like you had good. I mean, you had good background coming into this. Yeah. 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 Our school really prepares us for things like. Yeah, I'd say that um, SES has a more global approach than a traditional public school. It is definitely. a public school, but there's definitely, they look at issues from a more global scope, so that kind of helped us just coming into it. Yeah, like that they're very big on making sure you know all aspects of the issue and who's involved and why the stakeholders, what the motives of the stakeholders and why it's important to each person. So it was pretty easy for us to kind of Take, take the United States out of the issue, like just kind of yeah. block us off and take it that side of the issue. Okay, I'll just stop you guys, spend five minutes. Um,